أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا ونفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا يا أرحم الراحمين We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with beneficial knowledge to bless us with knowledge that's beneficial to bless us uh, to act upon the knowledge that we learn and to increase us in knowledge and action, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do what he wills. And we give prayers and salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his family and his companions and all those who follow in their footsteps. Ameen. Continuation of uh, explanation of Sahih al-Bukhari. Imam al-Bukhari, may Allah have mercy on him, said the category of washing your mouth in wudu. And he said, uh, Ibn Abbas said this, and Abdullah ibn Zayd also said this, um, referring to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doing this. And then he mentioned his chain of narration um, to Humran, the servant of Uthman ibn Affan, radiallahu um, anhu. He said that Uthman once asked for some water to make wudu, which in Arabic is called wudu, because the wudu is the action of wudu. Wudu is what is used to make wudu, so the water for wudu. The same thing with tuhur, with a dhamma and the ta, is the action of, of cleansing or cleaning. Tahur is the water that is used in cleaning. Fa'ul and fu'ul, for those who are interested in uh, the Arabic language. So Uthman ibn Affan who called for some wudu, which is the water for wudu, then he poured some of it on his uh, on his hand or on his hands, and then he washed his hands three times. Then he put his hand, his right hand, inside the water, took some out, and he washed his mouth and nose, and blew his nose, and then he washed his face three times, and his hands up until his elbows or past his elbows three times. Then he wiped his head. And then he washed all of his foot three times. Or he washed each foot three times. And then he said, Ra'aytu, I saw the Prophet وسلم, making wudu the same way I just made wudu. And then he said, Whomsoever makes wudu. Then he said, referring to the Prophet وسلم, said, Whomsoever makes wudu like this, and then prays two rak'ah, two units of prayer, he does not um, think or he does not um, think outside of the salah, meaning he's focused on his salah, his prayer, making sure he's, he's praying properly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive this person's sins. Forgive all these person's previous, previous sins. Now the reason I titled this video the type of sins that are forgiven by wudu is because um, I wanted to speak about this particular topic extensively. Although we're in uh, the explanation of Sahih al-Bukhari and the, this category is the category of making washing your mouth in wudu to show that washing your mouth in wudu, washing your mouth is part of wudu. And how the Prophet Sallallahu washed his mouth and his companions after him washed their mouths when they made wudu. Now the important part or an important part or an aspect or concept connected to this hadith is the aspect or concept of forgiveness of sins by acts of worship. So the the generality of this statement that all of his previous sins will be forgiven, the generality of the statement indicates that this encompasses minor and major sins. However, the most correct opinion is that this uh, hadith does not encompass major sins and that major sins have to have a tawbah. Now, what is a major sin, what is a minor sin? We'll get to that inshallah in a minute. The reason for that or the proof that this is only referring to minor sins, that only minor sins are forgiven by wudu, 
is because there are various ahadith where the Prophet Sallallahu indicates this concept. One of them is the Prophet Sallallahu says the five salawat and Friday to Friday, al Jumu'ah to ila Jumu'ah, or the Friday prayer to the Friday prayer, and the Ramadan to Ramadan are all means of expiating sins, إِذَا جُتُنِبَتِ kabair, if major sins are avoided. Again, five salawat, Jumu'ah to Jumu'ah, Ramadan to Ramadan are all means of expiating sins in the case that major sins are avoided, which means that if major sins are not avoided, that the sins will not be expiated, meaning the major sins will not be expiated. So if the five salawat and Friday to Friday, Jumu'ah ila al-Jumu'ah, and Ramadan to Ramadan, these prayers or these acts of worship are all pillars of Islam. If these pillars of Islam do not expiate the major sins, al-kaba'ir. This means that anything less than these pillars of Islam will not expiate al-kaba'ir, which are the major sins. And that's clear. And this is the opinion of the majority of the scholars. This is the opinion of Ata. This is um, the opinion uh, of Ibn Abd al-Barr. And Ibn Abd al-Barr actually reported that there is, um, there is a consensus of the scholars that this opinion is correct, meaning that these acts of worship only expiate minor sins and that major sins need a specific repentance. Uh, Al-Qadi Iyad mentioned that what is mentioned in this hadith um, is only referring to if a major sin is not committed. And this is what Ahl Sunnah, this is the opinion of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, that in order to expiate or forgive a major sin, there needs to be a specific repentance. There needs to be specific repentance for each major sin. Play. Some other ahadith, remember I said that there are various ahadith that indicate this meaning. Um, what uh, was reported by Muslim, Imam Muslim, rahimahullah, that Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu reported Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that any person that comes to a salah and he makes proper wudu and he is focused in the salah he completes its ruku' that this salah will forgive the sins, will forgive this person's sins as long as he does not commit a major sin. And that is any time. Any time he prays, it will forgive his sins as long as he does not commit a major sin. There's another hadith narrated by or reported by Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, that Salman al-Farisi, radiallahu anhu, reported Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that a person does not um, purify himself on the uh, on Friday, on Yom al Jumu'ah, and he completes his purification, and then he comes to Salat al Jumu'ah, and he listens to the Imam until the Imam is done with the Salah. Except, it is an, a means of expiation of that person's sins until the following Jumu'ah comes, as long as this person does not commit a major sin. Remember, as long as a person does not commit a major sin. Another hadith, um, Abu Sa'id radiallahu anhu and Abu Huraira reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and this, this hadith is reported in the Nasa'i, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, I swear by Allah, there is not a person that prays the five salawat and fasts in Ramadan and he um, gives zakah and he stays away from the seven major sins, except all of the doors of Jannah will be open for him, and then he will, it will be told to him, enter with peace, subhanAllah. Just doing these acts of worship is a means of expiating sins, as long as the major sins are not done, na'udhu billah. And many other ahadith, 
Now, it's worth mentioning what a major sin is. Um, the Prophet ﷺ has specified certain major sins. Um, among the major sins that the Prophet ﷺ has specified were ashirku uh, billah, setting up a partner with Allah and He's created you. Another is uqukul walidain, being um, not being dutiful to your parents, being disrespectful and not dutiful to your parents. Another is um, taking another person's soul without right. Another is aklul um, riba, um, taking usury or, us or, or, or um, interest. And there are other, uh, other major sins. Um, the scholars have identified or um, defined a major sin as any sin that has a punishment connected to it, whether that punishment may be in this life or in the hereafter. A major sin can become a minor, uh, 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 sorry, a minor sin can become a major sin if a person continues to commit this minor sin without repentance. So a person has a minor sin that they commit and they continue and continue and continue to do it without repentance, it can become a major sin. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who repent to him constantly. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those whom he forgives after we repent. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be of those whom our sins are forgiven and we do not do these major sins. We don't um, indulge in major sins. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised those who uh, avoid all major sins and the only sins they may fall into are the minor ones and they continue to repent to him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who repent before we die, to make us of those who die upon Islam, Tawheed, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, and that he accepts us and admits us into Jannah and it is told to us, Udkhuluha bi salamin aminin. Enter it with peace and safety. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika shadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.